another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and we're going to be going over some just ridiculous Warhammer 40k lore today. But before we do, uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to the Patreon and consider supporting us. Uh, you can get access to the Discord, uh, all of our wonderful wonderful posters at the $15 tier. Uh, when we hit 17k on the Patreon, we will be delving into that fan theory about the Dornian heresy that everybody apparently wants us to do. So yeah, if you want to see that, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, and Bricky will tell you about all the other fun stuff that you need to know about, I guess. He, he guesses. Hi guys, it's me, Bricky. Go look at the merch. It's in Orchidate.com down below. Very good. Book Club is the first heretic that's coming out this week in like four days after this episode comes out. Make sure you finish that, but I'm not going to talk about any more things because I have an ad for you. Roll it, Shy. Hi there. It's me, Bricky. Guy on podcast thing. Did you know that Lorgar is bald? Is Lorgar evil? Yes. Yes, he is. If Lorgar had our sponsor, Keeps, he would no longer be evil. Keeps is a service that will allow you to fight hair loss at its core. Because two out of three men tend to experience hair loss by the time they're 35. Lorgar was no exception. Keeps allows you to set up a routine that works for you, have all of your hair loss treatment delivered straight to your door, and has 24-7 care and support. When it comes to hair loss, being preventative is the number one most important step. So check out Keeps down in the description at keeps.com slash adric to get 50% off your first order. Go ahead and click the link in the description. And thank you once again for sponsoring our episode. This is actually really good timing considering the episode because see DK still doesn't know what today's episode is about, but it's solid timing in, in terms of the of the type of ad we got going on. DK. Are you, are you, are you ready? Are you ready for your quote? Nope. I don't think I'm ever ready for my quote. Um, but I, d damn it. I'll try. I'll dread it, you know, run from it. Yeah. It, it's it's going to arrive. All yeah. right. <clears throat> quote. The difference between gods and demons largely depends upon where one is standing at the time. Is that, is that the quote? That's cool. Yeah. That's got to be some word bearer shit. Bro, we're literally reading about word bearers right now. I know. I know. That's 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 why. And that's like the 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 whole shtick, right? Is is, you know, um well, I don't want to I don't want to spoil stuff that happens in the book. Wait, I'm sorry. Do you think I'm so lazy that we're just going to cover goddamn Lorgar before the book club about Lorgar? Yeah. Well, you're right. Today's an episode about Lorgar. Let's go! I knew it! <laughs> ah! Uh, yes, especially since you were like, oh, yeah, the timing on this is pretty good considering the ad we got and uh, first heretic. I was like, yeah, you know, and that's I, that is definitely a very like the difference between gods and demons. It's like, yo, that is literally Lorgar's uh, big strife. And uh, the big turning point in that book is when he's like, oh, hey, the old ways. <laughs> there's a little something to him. There's a there's a little bit going on there. Uh, actually, the reason it was a solid time for the ad is because the ad keeps is a, is a hair loss company and Lorgar is bald as shit. Oh, that was that <laughs> didn't, was. I, I didn't even, make that connection. <laughs> I even mentioned it in because okay, so we we always film the I film the ads like separately and then we put it in the episode for our viewers who don't know that, and so you don't realize that during the ad I'm literally like, man, Lorgar is evil probably because he's bald, so that's Damn. why you need our sponsor. Damn, all right, okay, okay. It's, it's shenanigans. Anyway, yes, so this is going to be a, a two weeks of word bearers, honestly. We're going to have Lorgar today, and then the book club will be at the end of this week, and then we will have the word bearers overall episode the week after that. So you're going to get a, you're going to get ham fisted in the face with some Lorgar, which I think is acceptable considering uh, the fact that Lorgar is, um, really likes to ham fist his ideals in your face. Yeah, sure. It's, it's Bible, Bible study, study week. week. Let's go. <laughs> Lorgar. 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 Lorgar Aurelian. Primarch of the Word Bearers Legion. The 17th Legion as well. Lorgar. 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 Lorgar Aurelian. Also known as the Urizen, 
which is uh, Colchisian for wisest of the wise. Ooh, and if we're Colchisian. talking about talking about Lorgar, like we spoke, uh, like we're talking in the book, we have to talk where Lorgar speaks much like this, like he is a very enlightened individual. Mm -hmm. He's got a very uh, pious tone to him. Yeah, he's, like pious, he's always right. giving a sermon. Yeah. Uh, side note: the first heretic is really fucking good. Oh yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is not a very happy book. Uh, but Ooh. the first, the first like third is pretty happy. It, well. Oh really? Oh yeah, because you know. The uh, first five percent is not, but the next like twenty percent is okay. <laughs> I was going to say, it starts off with Monarchia getting wrecked by Ultramarines and, and all that. I was like, that is not a happy start at all. No, it's not. And then Gilliman has this wonderful, is your tantrum over, Lorgar? <laughs> Which makes me dislike and like Gilliman both at the same mm -hmm. time. Anyway, Lorgar. So, a, a, the biggest chunk of the first Heretic book is the uh, raising of Monarchia all the way to the end of the pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. um, and because I know that the sequel to that book, which is Betrayer, I believe then covers the uh, Battle of Kalth and the Shadow Crusade against the Ultramarines along with our big boy, Angron. Oh, yeah. um, so we, uh, we will most likely uh, not cover a ton of the, uh, the pilgrimage of Lorgar, we'll cover a little bit of it, but since it's mainly in the book and it's the book club, we can just save that for the book club. Yeah, yeah. Because there's plenty to talk about. So because of that, I really put a lot more effort in trying to understand Lorgar's raising uh, and, uh, and a little bit of his interactions with other Primarchs afterwards, because the book gets you a good amount of your boy boy Maggie. Yeah, Magnus gets a, gets a little screen time. He does, um, and he's... Yeah. Uh, he's He's kind of a bro. He is. He definitely is. I I, I love the fact that uh, you know when uh, when they're done convening, Mag's like, okay, I'm gonna teleport out of here. See ya, and just <laughs> blows the entire <laughs> room apart. <laughs> Lorgar's like, I need to talk to Magnus about the dangers of uh, teleportation in small spaces. He just like destroys his entire observatory. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> comes in all worried. Are you okay, Lorgar? And he's like, Yeah. Why wouldn't I be? Like, oh, idiot. Whoops. So, Lorgar Aurelian, one obviously, it's more for the viewers, not for you. Uh, all of the Primarchs were created by the Emperor and then were scattered across the galaxy by the Chaos Gods. Lorgar ended up on the planet of Colchis. Uh, and we already know of Colchis a bit. And it is, a, uh, it is three times the size of Earth and spins way slower. Uh, it, it's there is most definitely the a heavy emphasis on like Middle Eastern Egyptian, um, but like not Egyptian in the sense of like the pyramids and the thousand suns or the crons, but yeah. there, there's there's certainly a lot of like the uh, more like I'd say I'd say a lot more Arabic. Kind of uh, um, Pakistani, a little bit of that going yeah, on sure. with with the the fact that the entire planet is a, hor a horribly hot desert, uh, mm -hmm. and all of the uh, well, yeah, modern e Shai corrects me and says modern Egypt is very much Arabic, but I'm, I'm trying to differ differentiate them with like yeah. the Krons and the Thousand Suns that are very obviously like pyramids and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of their major cities are up by the water. You know, got the Nile, eh, etc. Yeah, sure. Um, so he, when he arrives there, Colchis is already a very faithful planet. It's already a very religious planet. Mm -hmm. And he was found in his gestation capsule, 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 blah, blah, blah. Ca uh, so the ruling priesthood of this planet was known as the Covenant. This was the ruling, uh, religious faction of Colchis. Lorgar was found by these desert outcasts, outcasts of the Covenant, known as the Declined. They oh. just stumbled upon his capsule and uh, named him Lorgar, which means rain caller in uh, Colchisian. Okay. Um, in the Colchisian his, his capsule time. wasn't happen wasn't by chance floating in a river or something, was it? No, I think it was just in the desert. Okay, so they're not going too on the nose with sort of. Uh, uh, 
the uh, imagery of oh we found we found this baby in down in the river abandoned maybe he is our savior you know ah uh, yes this, they're yes. not going that on the nose with uh, Lorgar <laughs> and his uh, his religious overtones you know I actually they said they found it I I don't know if they found it in the river or not I'm not sure I don't think it's specified desert you know uh, from what I've GW, read I bet you, you, they did oh I don't worry they it gets did. It gets worse. Um, oh, boy. Don't you worry. So, 17 days after his, him being found, uh, he was already the size of a small child. Because, you know, that's just the way Oh, because Primarchs, Primarchs yeah. They grow faster um, again. A man, another man named Kor Faron, mm. which we know much yeah, of. Yeah, we know him, yeah. Um, I also think he might take the cake for worst father. <laughs> That is quite the prize to win in the universe of 40k. If you have the title of worst dad, oof. I, I he's definitely top five. Uh, Mortarian's father was not was pretty bad also. Yeah. Um, that, Big, Big E's e, a pretty terrible dad. Yeah, Big E's pretty terrible as well. There, there's some bad ones out there, but uh, yeah, Corferon. Wow, is he a piece of shit? Holy <laughs> Christ. Um, literally, you know, the Holy Ghost, etc. Um, he was an exiled member of the Covenant, the religious faction. Yeah. Uh, he was exiled because he believed the Covenant needed harsher and more aggressive conversion methods for oh, no. <laughs> for their their religious conclave. Oh no! So he was too cruel. Oh, um, he's that guy. Oh no! He's that guy. So oh, he shit. found Lorgar. And he was like, oh, okay, well, first, to back this up real quick, the Covenant is a polytheistic religion, and it dedicates oh. its focus on four entities mm -hmm. known as the Powers. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I wonder who the Powers are, eh? Yeah, gee, I wonder why there's only four. Hmm, yeah, four mm. of them, four chaos guys. Mm. Yeah, so the, the entire planet worships chaos, but yep. uh, under a much more benevolent kind of vision, you know? They don't really yeah. necessarily know that they're chaos gods, but they, mm -hmm. they know that they're the four powers. Yeah, so, they know that they're deities, they just don't realize that they're chaos deities that want to eat all of humanity and feed on them. Pretty much. Mm. So Corferon believed that Lorgar had been blessed by the powers. So in order to take him in, he decided to murder the entire declined group that uh, found Lorgar to cover <laughs> up their identity and then took Lorgar in as his adoptive son. Okay, yeah, he's, he, he does indeed sound like a giant piece of shit. You're right. Oh, it's, it gets so much worse. Um, so Corferon was consistently, emotionally, and physically abusive to Lorgar. Now... Oh. I'm not quite sure how far he could be physically abusive to Lorgar, all things considered, because this yeah, he's cause fucking Lorgar. Yeah. But he was consistently emotionally abusive. Um, he would he would often beat him. He would often degrade him, and uh, he would in fact cons so often emotionally uh, uh, manipulate him to try to create a dependency on him. Oh boy. Yeah, you're right. He's what a piece of shit dad. Yeah. Mm hmm. Corferon wanted to to uh, gaslight Lorgar into uh, believing that Lorgar needed Corferon uh, in order to be around. Um, now, Lorgar, with his teachings, he was very devout in his faith, obviously. Mm, obviously, yeah, it's Lorgar. But he believed that there was actually a singular god, a one god. That was the encapsulation of the Pantheon and had like the four powers under it, or he had mm. bound the four powers under one god. Now, Core Fire, I thought this was heresy, and so would naturally abuse uh, Lorgar every time he brought this up. Sure. Um, but he would also use Lorgar's immense skill and um, utilize his son in an attempt to take over the Covenant as well. Because uh, he wanted, because he hated the Covenant, because they kicked him out because he was too sure. mean. Yeah. So, much like Perturabo's dad kind of utilized his skills for his own gain, so did, uh, so did Corferon. Um, Lorgar, uh, or sorry, Corferon uh, actually had a mutiny against him from the group. 
Wow, they were what a surprise that Corfiran and his awful leadership ability and just abusing and killing anyone that... It's such a surprise that he would get a mutiny. Huh. Oh, oh, that's even worse for the reason of the mutiny. Uh oh, great. They mutinied against Corferon because Kor told them to go beat Lorgar for a small transgression, and they said no. Wow. He's like, go beat my son. He spilled the milk. And they were like, you know what? Fuck you, Corferon. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. I am, god damn it, no, no, I, we refuse, we're challenging you. And then because Lorgar has been emotionally manipulated this whole time, he was incredibly devout towards Corferon, so Lorgar murdered all of them. Oh, god. Yeah, well, I, I, I suppose knowing what we know from the book, it's like, yeah, Lorgar is indeed devoutly loyal to Corferon, and, and sees him as, like, this really, uh, he sees him as a good dad. He's he's very respectful and loyal to him and, and always listens to him, so yeah. I, I really guess that lines up and that's that sucks. That sucks. They re they really decide to go hard with the uh horribly overbearing <laughs> religious parents extreme on this one. Oh yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. For some reason I hadn't even made that connection, but it's like, oh yeah. Yeah. That you see in like horror movies and yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's Fair. that's no wire hangers ever. Um, oh. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> so, after he, uh, Lorgar saved Corferon's life, he actually started showing more affection towards Lorgar. He started shocking. appreciating him more. Yeah, shocking. Um, eventually, Lorgar became an archpriest of the Covenant, and he was named by uh, Corferon as the Bearer of the Word. Hey. Hey. They created a new kind of uh, conclave of religious like zealots known as the God Sworn uh, because okay. it was the, well, I guess the singular God, but basically they freed a whole bunch of slaves across Colchis and they marched them up to the capital, which uh, I, it's escaping me the name of the capital, but they, they go to it in the book. Uh, crap. I actually forget what the name of the, of the main capital was. It's obviously not Monarchia. It's uh Oh yeah. Veridesh. It's, it's it's so hard to remember some of these names in 40k. Like there, there, there's, there's a lot. It's uh, it's Veridesh. That was the one. Mm. Um, so he marched up to the capital. He had this giant sermon at the bottom of the gates. Then they opened the gates and gave him like the heads of all the the ruling class and was like, "We agree with you. Okay, come on in, Lorgar." <laughs> Shock! Wow! No way! That that worked. It, w it worked. It's like, it I am... He, he was just on the ground, just giving a fiery sermon. And people were seeing this primer, like, oh my good god, we believe you. So he eventually became the new ruling member of the Covenant, with uh, Kor Faron as his uh, high priest as well. So Lorgar, master of cultures, Kor Faron, high priest. And they went over, taking over the rest of the planet, naturally, because that's what all the primarchs did. To, one, to the final yeah. city... The final city named Ga uh Ga oh fuck um <laughs> Ga Gahevarla Jesus uh it had an <laughs> artifact from the age technology called a storm generator which was a giant raging lightning storm around the city to protect them so naturally in his majesty Lorgar walked up to it and parted the storm oh wow <laughs> <laughs> and wow. his army and his army went through the gap of the storm he parted and took over the city okay i mean hey you know at least they they didn't have him you know part the part the sea it's, i guess you know they, at close. least he didn't part the red sea and you know but yeah he, okay okay i mean he he is the pious religious uh you know savior image so, I I, you know, I can't I, even. I, I guess I get it, but man, that's really on the nose. I I can't even say at least like that's that's too much. I'm like right yeah. there. That's that's dumb. That's so it's, dumb. It's 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 too much, GW. Just tone it. Be a little more subtle, eh? Just a, a teensy bit. Just a teensy bit more subtle. So, uh, anywho, after that, Lorgar eventually revealed to the populace that he had this belief in this one god which uh, did not go very well with the populace, no, uh, who I believed bet. in the old ways, naturally. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So he had to spend a decent amount of time putting out civil wars and problems of that nature. But Corpharon also confided in Lorgo. He was like, hey, listen, I... I still kind of believe in the old ways and the four gods, but I, I believe that this that the one god is like the strongest of their number, etc. Right. Like I, I, I'm, I'm meeting it halfway. Yeah. Son, I've abused. <laughs> uh, so eventually, you know, uh, Lorgar is like the coming of the emperor will be eventually. He was the one god. The emperor came, and Lorgar mm -hmm. said, "Oh my goodness, I was right." Yeah, oh God, yes god does exist Hooray. i was right the whole time my faith my faith has been tested and i have been the victor damn mm, etc <laughs> um so so when the emperor arrives the first thing he does is like get to a knee he's like oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. here we are i'm i'm here i'm here for you yep 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 uh Yep. I'm, I'm surprised the Emperor even needed to say anything. He probably showed up and Lorgar was already on his knees, hands clasped in prayer and whatever you wish, my king. And then you uh, constantly refer to him as a god and the Emperor was like, stop that. And then uh, it's like, whatever you say, god. <laughs> I will do as you say, god. Stop calling me god. As you well, wish, god. As you wish, god. As you wish, divine being. Don't call me that either. Uh, okay, stop it. Okay, Jesus. Stop it! <laughs> I said, stop it! You're making me mad! I'm gonna burn down your spaghetti city. Yeah, I'm gonna burn down the Yamanakia. Hey, hey, hey. Gilliman's gonna be standing there. He's gonna be like, what up, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. the Emperor arrives, you know, he gives him his legion, the time. Uh, I believe his original legion's name... Uh, I actually don't remember his original legion's name. It was, um... You know? You know, there, there's like there's a gap in my knowledge. Let's uh oh, no. Bricky not knowing something? It's never been heard of before. I think it was the Imperial something. Imperial Heralds, Shy says. No, that's uh that's Herald World Claimer. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Love it. Love Got him. <laughs> just imagining that raptor with the spear and just Harold's face. Just... <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, the Imperial Herald's originally in my bed. Uh, so obviously, then he kind of goes on out with some of his new Astartes. He can't necessarily have Corferon become an Astartes via regular means. So he has him massively altered with tons and tons and tons of bionics and things like that. Almost kind mm. of, not necessarily like custodian. Those are more like made in test tubes, but... Um, he allows him to wear the Astartes armor and become a powerful Astartes and stuff through the use of massive bionic modifications as opposed to a genuine, um, like, procedure. Huh. I, I didn't realize that you could just take an adult and, like, put him in Ceramite and, and, and buy it, like, uh, make them a pseudo Astartes like that. I know that it did. It wasn't easy, and they had they spent a good amount of time and money and effort doing all this shit for him. Oh, okay. um, I'm assuming it's not cheap whatsoever either. Yeah, it's it's and, not a very commonplace thing to do. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, during this time, of course, there was also this one guy. You may know him. His name is Erebus. You son of a bitch! Now, <laughs> do you do you remember how Erebus was named Erebus? Oh, shit. I remember you told me, but I gotta be honest with you, I don't remember. So, Erebus, as a kid, was always just, like, a piece of shit. He was just a troublemaker kid. It's just what he was. Like, that's just some bad eggs. Makes sense. He was just a bad egg, and his parents would always scold him and say, Hey, why couldn't you be more like that good kid over there, Erebus? So, Erebus oh. took that literally, went up and strangled the kid to death. And then um, decided to get his facial tattoos of the dead kid on his own face and then took the name Erebus. Wow. What an absolute shitbag. He, he's just, he's full stop. Yeah, full stop shitbag awful. So Erebus Holy maintained shit. his belief with the powers, the four chaos gods, even when Lorgar was taking over stuff. And he kind of just stood in the background. 
very kind of quietly had his own faith and stuff and didn't really believe in Lorgar's one god deal. Uh, and even when when he joins the Legion eventually as his first and uh, lead chaplain, you know, he was really there to subvert Lorgar the whole time to in the belief of the of the chaos gods. Yep, that makes sense. Because he believes like very Arabic thing to do. Sure. Yeah, because he believes in the chaos gods. That's his faith. He believes yep. that he believes in the gods like he's he wants people, other people to believe in the in the chaos gods as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Great Crusade arrives. And Lorgar is particularly bad at it. Yep, sure he, is. Because he he's not a big fan of, I'm going to murder everyone on the planet and take over by force. I am going to murder a lot of people, but I am then going to re readjust the populace and make them believe yeah. in the word of the emperor and build monuments and statues and yada yada. So he was a fucking geriatric man in in the in the fast lane like he was going 40 yeah cuz his problem is he wants to convert the entire planet to emperor worship and that takes time instead of just raising the whole thing to the ground and being like yep that's the emperor's now let's reseed it i think he was the slowest of the primarchs when it came to worlds i think you're right yeah i think that i think he sense. was probably the slowest i can't think of someone else who was slower at the moment I mean, shit, Kurz conquered on a budget. Um, <laughs> the, it, it didn't work for very, it didn't work for long, but he conquered on a budget. The Lion and, like, Gilliman were just stomping through people. Oh, yeah, Gilliman was probably real quick, real efficient. Yeah, they, they, and also, he, I think Gilliman already had, like, a hundred worlds done in the Ultramar system by the time the Emperor even found him. Damn! Because he's Gilliman, and yes. Gilliman has the greatest taxes known to man. Stupid Boy Scout. Stupid blue Gilliman with his stupid, stupid Gilliman. Little, little blue, blue bitch. I only like Gilliman when he wakes up with ultra depression and has an interesting story. I think Gilliman being a being kind of a, a shitter earlier is a it's kind of funny, though. It adds a little bit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, I, I said uh, alongside Dorn and Gilliman, Lorgar's, Lorgar was one of the rare conquerors who left the conquered place in a better state than before the conquest. But we ain't about quality here, boy. We're about quantity. Roll out them virus bombs. <laughs> Hell yeah. Jesus. Hell it, yeah, brother. Yeah, Dor Dorn and Gilliman would take the place and they would turn it into a goddamn, uh, a real functioning planet. Lorgar turned it into a faithfully functioning planet, but that would take double the time. Oh yeah, definitely. Because telling you to go pick up that box is easy. Telling you to abandon your prior uh, religious beliefs and believe in one god emperor is a little harder. Yeah, just a little bit. So Lorgar, not being too great at his job, ended up with a, uh, you know, y you know, here's the interesting thing. It took like a hundred years of this Great Crusade, like a hundred years, I think, mm -hmm. of, of this Great Crusade before the raising of Monarchia. So either the Emperor, because the Emperor had to have known that he was doing oh, what yeah. he was doing. Yeah, yeah. But I, I bet he would have turned a fucking eye to it. Kind of like how he turned a blind eye to the way Kurz did his stuff. But it was because he was so slow. You know what's strange to me is like, at no point in that hundred years, like after maybe like 10, Biggie wouldn't go to Lorgar and be like, hey, buddy, look, really appreciate what you're doing, but uh, you got to pick up the pace, bud. Instead of just like, oh, it's been a hundred years. Hey, Lorgar, I despise everything that you're doing. Goodbye, Monarchia, snap, and then just burn it all to the ground. Like, there was never a point where he was like, hey, Lorgar, buddy, maybe maybe cut back on the religious stuff. Maybe pick up the pace a little bit. You don't have to convert everybody to worshiping me, which I don't think you should do anyway. He just, yeah, I'm here to burn your everything you've ever loved and known to the ground. Well, if, uh, if he did that, what would that make the Emperor? I'd make him a good dad, wouldn't and it? And we know he ain't that. No. Also, bad, 10 years is not a whole lo long, like, not a lot of time when it comes to conquering planets. True, but it's some smaller interval of time than 100 years. He lets this go on for 100 years before he's like, he shows up and he's like, yeah, you've been doing it wrong all this time. I do wonder if he was, say, distracted as it, or was busy finding the other sons. Or if at the or if at the time he was dealing with other issues, I have no idea. Probably not. 
Um, but yeah, his decision to punish Lorgar for what he's doing by burning down Jerusalem from yeah. the sky with the old Shimmerine Legion and then forcing them to psychically kneel in front of him maybe wasn't the best idea. Yeah, I uh, I remember that part in the book because for some reason I I remember you talking about it and I I, I in my head I was just like oh yeah if the emperor showed up Lorgar and the word bears they would just kneel you know it's fine and then the book it was like yeah they were psychically forced to kneel and it was like this this is not obedience or like this isn't uh, worship this is slavery and it's like oh god oh he, god <laughs> he literally just said the word Lorgar three times with like his mind and it would and it sent all the word bearers to their, their knees like yeah. not just to their knees but like it like launched them to the ground it was a genuine wave of a psychic blast that that knocked him over yep here's lorgar lorgar he just keeps yelling like, lorgar Thump. everybody do the flop boom <laughs> damn that's an old reference holy shit that's actually that's actually not a bad one for this one <laughs> yeah it's just just the entire hundred thousand word bearers and lore everyone do the flop, the flop. Boom. <laughs> yeah that's what he psychically sent out to all of the word bearers <laughs> do you hear that brother everybody do the flop. Everyone, they, just, they all just like <laughs> land on their backs yeah just the sound of a hundred thousand clanging ceramite um but so yes, the raising of Monarchia was in the book. We'll talk about that in the book club. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, of course, is followed by Erebus and Corferon convincing Lorgar. And you know, convincing, I guess, but at the same time, I think Lorgar would have eventually gone down this path anyway. Mm, yeah. Con considering what he was doing and dealing with. Yeah. Because they basically just said, like, yeah, I mean. Perhaps the, just because the emperor is a god doesn't mean that he is god worthy of worship. Maybe he might just because like oh uh, uh, like the uh, the divinity is worth worshiping simply because it is divine, whereas that's the problem. Like that isn't what it should be. Yada yada. Yeah. So uh, yeah, naturally it's the concept of I actually really like how they discuss religion, especially him and Magnus. Um, Remember in a, in a live stream we did a little bit ago, I was like, uh, "There's there's always the touchy topic of uh, of female space marines," and I was uh, like, yes. "I was like, you know, you know, if they wanted to make one of the two fake, the one of the two destroyed legions, one of those, like I probably I probably wouldn't mind. Like it's like yeah. whatever." Sure. But then I then I heard Magnus and Lorgar being like, "Yeah, what about our two other brothers that got purged?" And I'm like, "Ah, damn it." Well, they could very easily go back and retcon that and just be like, "Oh, yeah, they just they just didn't know. They they were just assuming, you know, uh, stupid." No, no dudes I think assuming I, things. Yeah, it's funny. I think they do know, don't they? Because they had some shockingly decent talk about like the two destroyed legions, and yeah, even Lorgo was about to mention something, and Magnus was like, "Hey, we don't hey, talk about it. We don't we don't talk about Bruno." <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sure we're gonna have a a very a very. Uh, very calm comment section. Oh, um, yeah, sure, sure. Naturally. But uh, that that being aside, yeah, it was interesting, the idea of, like, Lorgar, you don't want to be the third now, do you? Yeah. You, know, you don't want to be number three because you were kept defying the emperor or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like their talk about the pilgrimage. You know, the, the pilgrimage is just, it's what the religious people did. They found their anything or whatever. Yeah, they found their faith. Yeah, and, and this time it was the pilgrimage into the warp, which goes as expected. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> it goes about as uh, yeah, it goes about as shit to the wall as it can possibly go. It really do. We'll discuss this in the book club. But yeah. the pilgrimage happens. Lorgar finds out that there are the chaos gods. Mm -hmm. Erebus is like, check out the chaos gods. Corferon's like, wow, the chaos gods. Lorgar's like, okay, holy shit, the chaos gods. I he found learns, my gods. I found the thing I want to worship. They do exist. Hooray. They do exist. He learns about Sladesh. He learns about the fall of the Eldar. Mm -hmm. Learns yeah. about all those major visions. He talks with Maggie again when Maggie is not doing hot. Um... <laughs> Maggie just was very hot as, you know, Prospero burned. Yeah, burned to fucking ground. Literally hot. Uh, so, you know, things were rough, and Lorgar was gone for, it was like 43 years in the warp or something, which was actually, like, not that long at all. Yeah, it was some 40-odd years, yeah. yeah it was, he, was, he was out there, so he finally he comes back, he arrives, 
And he's like, I have determined that there are gods worthy of worship and that the chaos gods are not innately heaven or hell, but it is a fluid motion. It is heaven and hell. The chaos gods need humanity to, um, to prosper. And it is in fact, not their goal to consume us, but in fact, to have a sympathetic combination, to be together, to be one, the materium and the immaterium. Well, that's essentially what, what the uh, primordial truth is, right? Is that one leads to the other and it's almost a symbiotic relationship where uh, to make the immaterium, you need the ma you like to make the immaterial world, you need the material world and the material world needs it. It's, it's that whole shtick or something well, like that. I think it's also the existence of the chaos gods as well. Like the primordial mm. truth is just like this, this, the, this is the warp. These are the chaos gods, heaven, hell. Like, oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the truth, yeah. which is the, um, I like that picture I just posted where it's like, read bitch, read. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is a picture and a half. Yeah, that's fair. Um, however, like it goes back to the, the biggest and most famous quote by Lorgar which is the opening lines of the book of Lorgar, which is what he writes after his pilgrimage, which is, all I ever wanted was the truth. Remember those words as you read the ones that follow. I never set out to topple my father's kingdom of lies from a sense of misplaced pride. I never wanted to bleed the species to its marrow, reaving half the galaxy clean of human life in this bitter crusade. I never desired any of this, though I know the reasons for which it must be done. But all I ever wanted was the truth. Damn. So that's all he wanted. So that, that's that, which is after reading the book, I believe him. You yeah, know, that's, like like that's... all he wanted was to know these gods exist. Yeah, this his, is a thing. Yeah, his whole thing was he just wanted to know like if if the gods existed, who they were, and like you know, because he's he's, he's 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 so religious. He need he like it felt like Lorgar needed something to worship like he could not live in a world where there was not a deity for him to worship and he he just he wanted to know the truth are they out there are they not is there something to worship is there something greater than us and yeah that's that 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 is a very lorgar quote holy shit it makes me like so so I've determined the fact that I think lorgar I like lorgar and I also fucking hate lorgar Agreed. I, I am I, stuck I can, in between. I with that, yeah. Also, because, why does that drawing of Lorgar look like Handsome Squidward? Because he because he looks like Handsome Squidward. He, he does. Just... Wait, did you make a SpongeBob reference? Yeah, I knew. I, I've I've no, I've I've seen the Handsome Squidward memes. I, I've seen those May Mays. Okay, well, you had to ruin it like that, but you know. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 yeah. He does. Yeah, he, does. he does. I know he does. Um, I actually really like this one image of Lorgar. Uh, it's a fan-drawn version of him, but I think it, it's probably the the one I like the most, uh, mainly because it not only does it make him look fucking awesome, um, but it also kind of gives him a little bit more of like that. Uh, I think this artist draws the characters a little bit closer to like the ethnicity they're based around. Yeah, he looks great in that picture. Also, his armor is so sick that yeah. it has like this the 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 upper half of the skeleton on it. That's so cool. And his 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 cudgel looks amazing. His uh his cudgel? Yeah, the the big mace thing. Oh, his crozius. Yeah, yeah, crozius. That's the word I was looking for. Cudgel sounds like a sex toy. A cud isn't a cudgel just like a big hammer, like a big like mace hammer type it's deal? It's a sex toy now. Okay. <laughs> anywho, <laughs> um, <laughs> anywho, yeah, Moving I, I kind right of. Along. I kind of, I kind of hate Lorgar, but I kind of like him. Uh, I, I kind of believe him sometimes when he speaks to his sons. Like, like he's definitely got mm. the preacher's, the piousness. He, he sometimes genuinely seems like he gives a shit about his sons. Yeah, he does. He's also kind of selfish, and it, sometimes he like to. He knew exactly what the fuck was going to happen to Argel Tall. Oh yeah, I, I. He even kind of tells Argel Tall that, doesn't he? Where he was like, uh, Ar Argel Tall was like, you knew it was going to happen when we went into the void, didn't you? And he's like, well, 
I mean, I didn't know exactly, but I had a good idea of what was going to happen to you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was kind of sacrificing you. You know, yeah. like I was, I was kind of sending you to your doom, and I and I knew it. Sorry. Yeah, and there and there are other times where like uh, you know a couple word bearers will die, and he'll seem like he's just in terrible grief over it, and it's like, make up your mind, Lorgar. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I yeah, because like the Monarchia thing, he he really finds the the value of faith to be genuinely important. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. Not just because he's a zealotist crazy man, um, <laughs> but because he I think he's right. The, the human desire for faith is a very important aspect, and nothing does bind people as easily as that does. And you know, like I I believe him on that stuff. I sure. also believe him when he says he's not a soldier. I believe him when he says he's he doesn't want to be like a conqueror. He wants to write and and be a you know be a philosopher and and be a be a priest and have sermons. Like I, I believe him. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. He is, uh, he is not as quick to violence as some of the other Primarchs are. He's not as quick to just like immediately squash you with his bare hands or something. I mean, he has that power and he is that intimidating, but it's not like he just. It's not like his first answer is like, I'm just going to wring your neck out. Which is also interesting because he can flip on a hair. I remember there's the part in the book when he was, he was telling the custodians to leave him be as he addresses his sons. And he's oh, being yeah. very, and he's, he's got that, that smile on his face. He's got his hands clasped and he's like, well, you know, this is a very important thing for me and my sons. We would appreciate the privacy. And they kept saying no. And he's like, I see this is why you are made in a test tube as a genetic, like, fucking abortion, and I would not piss on you if you were on fire. Actual words said by Lorgar. Yeah, he, he legitimately calls the custodians genetic abortions that were made in test tubes. It's, it's like, like, whoa, Lorgar spitting fire, damn! It, it, it was so bizarre to hear Lorgar, Primarch of the Word Bearers, say, I would not piss on you even if you were on fire. Yeah, to a custodian, like, holy shit. And then, and then he tells everyone to point their guns at them and makes them leave. Yeah, yeah. Which is just, it, like, it, it's how quick. He, he puts on a face, he puts on this, uh, this like, divine kind of uh guys but that that guy is, is quickly shattered when he doesn't get what he wants yeah definitely. He, he's uh he, he's very much okay that last picture shy posted makes him look like a porn star look at that fucking face <laughs> look, <laughs> yeah it kind of does a little bit he he's got them hungry eyes hungry eyes those eyes are hungry um but <laughs> yeah so he's He's so self-absorbed, but also I, I do believe he does care about other people. He's shown the most compassion out of any of the Primarchs I've read about. Besides Not maybe, <laughs> no, besides maybe like Magnus does a pretty good job, I'd say. And Sanguinius, fair, yeah. Sanguinius is pretty wonderful, but. Um, oh, poor Sanguinius. Poor Sanguinius. But like, despite all, he's, that first like third of the book, his word bearers are pretty decent people. They're like. Going oh, yeah. around to the populace, like giving their faith scrolls and blessing them, and mm -hmm. they're always like, "Oh, thank you, great angel." Yeah, uh, and, and oh, you yeah. know, contrast that with the marches on the Stromo. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a difference. Ooh, ooh yeah, a little, little difference. Yeah, sure. Ooh. So anyway, the pilgrimage ends, uh, and then after the pilgrimage and his time away, it then comes the major sections of the Horus heresy. Mm -hmm. um, now, during, of course, I'm not sure if it's during this time or after, but Erebus eventually does shank Horus with, like, the, or Horus gets shanked by the fancy anathema dagger and gives him... Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Erebus helps save him, which gives him the visions of chaos and slowly starts corrupting him, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. um, but by the time Horus has that happening and the heresy erupts, like, Lorgar is already... The word bearers are already full stop fucking traitor. Oh, yeah. I would imagine... By this point, yeah, they're already full stop traitor, and they're worshiping what they assume are the old gods, the old ways uh, that they learned about on cultures. Yeah, um, Hor Horus and, is not yeah. the first heretic. The first heretic is is huh, Lorgar. 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 Yeah, he, he is the first heretic. Yeah, that's why Lorgar. It's like everything is Lorgar's fault. It's not the worst statement. I mean, that's true. I guess if Lorgar was not as keen. 
to sort of find faith and religion and something to worship. I mean, I guess the Chaos Gods probably would have been found out eventually. Definitely by Magnus, who was already kind of having problems with Zinch. Well, that's fair, actually. That's true, because that's happening around this time, too, isn't it? Yeah. There's, I mean, it's a lot of moving parts, but Lorgar was already in cahoots with Chaos far before the Horus Heresy erupted. Mm -hmm. But the Horus Heresy did, in fact, erupt. They virus-bombed Isvan III. They culled their own ranks of the Loyalist versions. They did the drop site massacre as well, you know, all that fun stuff. And the drop site massacre, <laughs> the big fight that was going on was uh, good old him versus Corvus Corax, the Raven. Corvus Corax, yep. So the fight that ensued on Isvan 5 was, was, qu was quite the something. Um, <laughs> quite the something, yeah, yeah. It was quite the something. Uh, as they were having their, their major battles and the like, uh, the main... Well, okay, I, I'm, I'm skipping something for uh, in a, for a bit. Uh, I believe that this is post... Is this post the, um... No, yeah, so, so the, sorry, it, it would be the, the fight of Kalth would be first, which I believe is the uh, Nuceria and, and the Kalth and the Shadow Crusade, which is... All of the shit in goddamn now, damn it now, goddamn it, Horus Heresy, You're <laughs> fucking difficult to figure out. I, I'm trying to figure out if the Cal stuff happened before the drop site massacre or after. I think it happens after. Yeah, it's a, it's after. Okay, yeah, it's after. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay cool. I was right. It, it goes, it's okay. It's the pilgrimage of Lorgar, then the Isfahan three virus bombing, the drop site massacre. And then after that, it's um, the Battle of Kalth and the Shadow Crusade. Okay, 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 okay. We're back on the timeline. We're back on timeline. I got, I got it back. All right. So in the Drop Site Massacre, you have the the clash of the Raven and the Urizen, him being the Urizen. Mm -hmm. um, this was interesting as Lorgar and Corvus Corax start going at blows with each other, um, and Argel Tall was also along with his, uh, his special group of people, the, the Gal Vorbach, were fighting, oh, yeah. were yeah, fighting yeah. the, uh, the Raven, the Raven Guard, and Lorgar was fighting, or, yeah, Lorgar was fighting the Raven Guard, and, you know, naturally, uh, the Raven was fighting Argel Tall, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Corvus Korax fighting Argel Tall is a, is a swift grave, uh, for Argel Tall. Yeah, I was gonna so, say that is a that's a big mismatch. So I got to assume Argel Tall unfortunately does bite the dust. Uh, new. Uh, Argel Tall may not be a guy in uh, in 40k, but uh, which means he definitely dies at some point during the Heresy. But I'm not telling you when. Oh, okay, cool. I, so he so Corvus Quarks doesn't kill him, huh? No, I know when Argel Tall dies, and who oh boy. <laughs> we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, oh boy! <laughs> we'll get to that in, in, if we ever end up reading that book. Oh, okay, um, okay but it's in one of the other books. Gotcha. In order to save, uh, in order to save Argel Tall from the Raven, him and Lorgar or Raven and Lorgar fight. Uh, they have their big old duel because they have all these Primarch duels down there. You know, you had Fulgrim sure. and Ferris Manus, which ended up mm -hmm. with Ferris Manus dying. Um, Lorgar is not a fighter. He's still a Primarch, but he is not a fighter. Uh, however, he finally was able to break out his psychic potential that he's always had but never had a good ability to manifest. And by finally using it, but in order to save Argel Tall, he screamed out this psychic energy from his mind where he had like wings of psychic fire, actual Whoa. wings, and just his entire body was like haloed by trails of psychic fucking strength. I think he actually Hell had yeah. a I think he actually had a halo, which is hilarious to me, but oh. <laughs> um regardless that so badass. Holy shit. Yeah, Wings Lorgar's. of fire psychic trail and a crazy halo. Let's go. So it was Lorgar's actual psychic wings versus Corvus Korax's giant metal uh, wings of like jetpacks. And mm. so they they fight each other. Uh this unfortunately does indeed uh, mean that Lorgar is still, despite this all, not a fighter. So Korax decides to kind of body him Ooh, as, as no. he is as he is the Raven Lord. He is like a master of assassination and, yeah. and murder. So he decided to uh, 
shove his giant clawed talons into his stomach. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, Lorgar, no! And uh, as, it, as he dropped his, his crozius mace through it, and he Lorgar would headbutt Karax's face, shattering his nose, but he wouldn't let go. And he kept headbutting him, breaking up his face, but he would not let go. And eventually Korax Jeez. ripped out his fucking uh, blades from his body, doing far more damage than the initial impaling oh, did. Okay, okay. So Lorgar's stomach is like a hole, like four, like four giant serrated holes. Oh, Lorgar. <laughs> and as uh, Korax went to go slice him dead, uh, a different piece of metal caught his uh, remaining talon instead. And uh, Korax looked to his side and saw a man known as Conrad Kurz. Oh, who, okay. Who, who saved Lorgar's life. Let's go, Kurz. And, uh, and Kurz grabbed onto his uh, Korax's wrist and wouldn't let him go uh -huh. in order to try to kill Lorgar. So eventually, um, Korax just fired his jetpack and flew away. Okay. Uh, and naturally, Kurz laughed his ass off at the naturally, sky because sure. he's insane. Um, <laughs> no, not Kurz. He's not insane. What? No. No, no, no. not at all. He's totally in his right mind. <laughs> yeah, he went to Lorgar and said, this is the last time I'm ever going to save your life. Like, yeah. and it, he looked at all of his possessed fucking word bearers near him. Mm -hmm. All of his, like, half-demon infested fucking word bearers. And was like, Kurz looked at him and was like, you disgust me. You are, you are not, not only are you foul, but you are rancid with corruption. Damn. I, like, you are, like, Conrad Kerr has looked to, to Lorgar, who is missing multiple sections of his stomach, and he's like, I hate you. You're gross. You're you icky. are gross. Imagine Kerr's of all people, like, yeah, you're disgusting. Gross. So. Everybody I, gets one. Everyone gets one. So, <laughs> so after that. Uh, they he they have a couple moments of uh, he speaks to Magnus for a bit, learning more uh, chaos, primordial truth, etc. There is uh, the battle at Kalth, which we covered pretty extensively in the Angron and Ultramarine episodes, mm -hmm. because this is when uh, they fight Gilliman, and Gilliman eventually punches Angron so hard one of his old slave skulls falls off and oh, and Gilliman yeah. crushes it under his foot and Angron mm -hmm. goes ballistic goes crazy yep and so this is when Lorgar starts chanting in the chaos world um because the two of them are buddies or they sure seemed like they were buddies mm -hmm. because then you know Angron was fighting Gilliman was probably gonna die Lorgar saves him Saves him. The World Eater's librarians were trying to remove Angron's soul from his body in an attempt to save his life from the Butcher Nails. But yeah. Lorgar, being Lorgar, was like, I want to make him a big demon. <laughs> wow, that's such a Lorgar thing to do. Oh, Lorgar. Oh, that Lorgar. Opened the sky <laughs> up. It started raining blood. Fucking transforms Angron into a giant demon. Like the last thing you would have wanted. He just wanted to die. Yep. He just wanted to die. He just wanted a swift end. If, if you're a World Eaters fan, I feel like you want to you fucking hate goddamn the Lorgar for what he, what the, he did to your Primarch. Yeah, but hey, look at look at the mini now, huh? The mini is very cool. The new uh, Angron mini with the his mini. ripped bicep wings. Yeah. The, the mini is very cool. I will I will it give you that. Super slick. Um, but that of course. Battle of Kalth, they eventually bail after destroying a shitload of the uh, Ultramarine stuff. The Fidelis Lex ship burns to the ground. We've all, we've covered a lot of this stuff in all the Ultramarine episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and really, eventually, Ang or he, uh, Lorgar attempted to usurp Horus. Uh, wow, really? Lorgar attempted to usurp, usurp Horus? Yeah, he thought that Horus would eventually lead to the uh, death of the... Uh, Death of the of the heresy because Lorgar was unfit, so he mm. tried to usurp him, but he was betrayed, and then Horus beat him to an inch of his life and was like, "Fuck off." Yeah, I imagine in a fight, Horus would absolutely body Lorgar. Like it wouldn't even be a, even remotely a contest. L Lorgar does not win many Primarch fights, for he is not a, a fighter. He is a yeah. he is a philosopher, 
And Horus is the fucking war master. He is the guy. And he's also pretty jacked on chaos right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess Horus is kind of jacked on chaos at this point. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm sorry. What is this, Shy? Being demon sucks. But hey, being dead like Sanguinius is better. Am I right, Blood Angels fans? Because Sanguinius is dead. Remember how he died from death? Remember how he's dead? Oh, man. But, uh, but I, I like Sanguinius. Well, though, he's dead. Though I guess the Blood Angels are far more interesting for having endured the death of Sanguinius than if he had survived and they were just like, oh, yeah, we're all just so cool. Beep, beep, boop. You know, I guess That's, they're better off for it. Like Ultramarines. Exactly. They'd just be like Ultramarines light if uh, Sanguinius was still around, I guess. That's the reason why I like the Night Lords so much. Conrad Kerr's being alive really takes away from the intrigue of the Legion. Yeah, yeah. Um, anywho, you know, the, the heresy itself occurs. They fail, obviously. Uh, the word bearers are barely at all present at the, uh, at the actual battle for uh, Terra. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're actually, actually they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're barely there at all. Um, they, have, they have one group, I think it's because he tried to usurp Horus. Wow. Oh, so, so Lorgar tried to usurp Horus during the during them trying to take over Terra? No, before that. Uh, but oh, okay. he wasn't at he wasn't at the battle for Terra because he was fighting the Ultramarines and the Shadow Crusade. Right, but I, right. I do believe there was a chunk of Warbearers that went to go fight in the Battle of Terra, but like it's like not many. I think it was oh, only okay. maybe five thousand of them. I, I can't quite remember the exact number. Yeah. But yeah, the rest of them were fighting. Terra, that's not a lot, yeah. Yeah, the rest of them were keeping the Ultramarines busy in the Shadow Crusade because the Ultramarines had the large one of the largest Goddamn oh, yeah. battle if you can keep the Ultramarines busy, yeah, you definitely don't want them getting into that fight, if at all possible. So that was his job. They fail, obviously, at the Horus okay. Heresy, and then Lorgar runs away into the warp, as with most of the other people. He yeah. spends, uh, he's trying his best. I believe he is a demon Primarch now, just like the rest. Um, oh, is he actually a demon Primarch? I think he's got these, like, big-ass horns on his head now and, and the like. Is there a mini or a picture of him as a demon primer? Because I don't know that I've ever seen his uh, demon form. Not a good, no, no mini, um, but not a good image of him as a demon primarch. I think it's just, he looks like a, he's got like four he horns on his head. I think, actually, I think this is him. So does Lorgar need a mini? Does, um, does, does he need, oh. I believe that if you, he would be one of the many demon primarchs, much like Percherabo, that would, uh. He'd need a new updated mini. He would need he would need an actual like demon Primark mini if you wanted to play him in 40k instead of 30k. Ooh, that I mean his that form looks pretty cool. It's all right. It's, and I like it's it. all right. I, I prefer his bald ass head. I I kind of like that his horns basically form like a crown on his head. Yeah, yeah a little bit. He's he's pretty he's pretty classic. There's some artist renditions. That's one that Shy I think just posted. You know, there's nothing wrong with the art that Shy just put, but I don't, I kind of don't like it. It's almost too much. Even too like by too chaos spiky. standard. Yeah. Yeah, too spiky. Too much, too I, much shit I, going I, on. I, I like the ones you posted a lot better. That I one is, yeah, a little too much. A little too much going on on that one. I think the ones I posted, I, I believe, are, are canon. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, I think. It's hard with art. There's so much fan art of, of these kinds of stuff. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, but, uh,. He has ascended to an extent, but at the same time, uh, this is kind of when Corvus <coughs> Corax fought him once mm -hmm. and, and said something on the lines of, I've got a taste for your blood now, Lorgar. I know where to find you. <laughs> and I believe for the next 9,000 years, he's been hiding away in his castle like, God damn it, this fucking bird outside. Oh, uh, okay. That, that's where that meme comes from is uh, be, because Corvus Corax fought him and got a taste for his blood, he's sort of got like this... Uh, internal tracking on him, eh? Uh, not, not, not quite. Uh, oh. I'm, 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 I'm very much uh, paraphrasing this kind of thing. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funnier to imagine him in, in a big tower being caught at by a bird. <laughs> um, he is, he is no, he is no longer being caught at. If that's to make sense, he, he is back out and about. Okay. Um, recently, I believe it was in the last Codex edition, he was said that he is back out leading the word bearers across the galaxy, causing havoc again. Hooray! Um, I get. Well, I guess that's not a hooray, but it's yeah. not a hooray. He he is out of the warp. Um, I think there's some question on whether or not Corvus Corax actually a demon, a demon bird. 
I thought he was just regular bird. Um, but so it, it's like a did, fan theory that he's Demon Bird because he spent so much time fucking around Lorgar in the goddamn, uh... Oh, it's because he spent so much time in the warp trying to get Lorgar that he actually turned into a demon himself because It's just... assumed. Assumed that that was the thing, but I think that's fan theory? Oh, uh, Shai says, uh, Lorgar said, I sense no demon when he saw Korax, literally. Right, my question, was that uh, in the beginning, like a thousand years after the heresy, or was that like year 40k? Because if he's been in the warp fucking around with Horus... Wait, Lorgar said, I sense no demon when he saw Korax, as in mutant Korax, as in big bird. Wait, so wait, if he said he senses no demon in... So Korax just got mutated into a big bird, not by chaos and not as a demon? He just kind of... Wait, okay, back this up real quick. I'm confused. I'm okay, I, I think I think there's two things. So Lorgar said that that uh, Corvus Corax has been massively mutated and fucked up by the warp, so he's like a big berm, but he's not like a demon such as Fulgrim or being taken over. I mean, I I, I guess that makes sense because Corax isn't necessarily worshipping any of the gods. So it's not like he would get turned into a demon on like that that fell under the jurisdiction of any one of them it's just warp fucky wucky messed him up a little bit and now he's just a weird big mutated bird okay that that's that's what i thought was the case i guess i get confused between like warp fucked and demon because normally they go hand in hand that's um, fair. Yeah. so so okay i thought that korax was indeed a big scary fuck off nevermore bird dude but when I say bird demon, I meant like, oh my god, it's giant and horrifying, and not like demon demon. Yeah. So he's not a demon, so to speak. But he's he just is a mutated big monster bird. And, and and it was constantly patrolling his tower until until now. Yeah. Um Okay. Now they're that's both out and about. The uh but in the in the world of the Lorgar life, um yeah, the pilgrimage of Lorgar is really the big thing, the burning of Anarchia and his horribly abusive childhood. Uh, which which makes a lot of sense now why he's the way he is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he hates Gilliman, obviously. There is <laughs> no surprise there. Yeah, yeah. There's a wonderful stratagem in the new book, the new chaos book called Vengeance for Monarchia, which oh, is yeah? wonderful. Yep. If you fight uh, Ultramarines, you get a bunch of benefits. Hell yeah, brother. My kind, very... That's my kind of bonus. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Well, it, it works both ways. The, uh, the the factions that were on the drop side of Massacre have vengeance for Isvan 5, where they get benefits ah. against the other people. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but regardless, yeah, Lorgar here is, is currently in Demon Primarch mode. Um, well, this actually had me looking up something about demons and demon Primarchs. Um... Oh yeah, Shai found the Lor Korax Lorgar interaction. If you want to post that, I actually have an interaction with him and Fulgrim that I really like to uh, post as well. Uh, but I'll do that in a, in a second. Um, it's the Korgar interaction, eh? Stop that, you. Um, Corvus Korgar. I was looking up what a demon prince was mm -hmm. because I was trying to figure out because we know that Argel Tall and some of the word bearers have like a symbiotic demon inside them. Oh yeah, they've been uh, possessed. Yeah, they've been they've been somewhat possessed. Uh, we Whoa! All... <laughs> Holy wall of text, Batman! Oh god. Okay, I'll. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll read that in a moment. Um, okay. But uh, there was also the Exalted, which was a possessed demon in the Night Lords trilogy. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I forgot about that. But I was wondering, like, I know Fulgrim has his own problematic situation where he's kind of being possessed by a demon, but. Mm -hmm. Magnus and like Mortarium don't appear to be possessed by a demon, but they That's are true. demon Primarchs. Yeah, like they just sort of got the powers of chaos and they haven't necessarily been possessed by it. They're still themselves. Yeah, that 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 that's that's a good point. So I looked up what a demon prince was, because a demon primarch is not a thing. It, they became demon princes, mm -hmm. uh te technically, but they're yeah. just very, very big versions. So I looked up a demon prince. It says a demon prince is a human champion of chaos who has been elevated to demonhood as a reward for their actions. So it appears that the demon prince is in fact an elevation, like it is turning you into a demon as opposed to oh. possessing your mind 
of a demon. Right, so you, right, So right. you still are you, but you've, like, changed what you are as a yeah, material you, object. Yeah, you've ascended into a demon instead of being possessed by a demon to get your powers. Yeah, you've been, you've been cre like, so it makes sense because Magnus and Mortarian appear to still have their own free will. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. air quotes. Yeah. Air quotes. There's no demon in their body, like, whispering into them and, like, yeah, holding yeah. them back. It seems that way. Whereas Fulgrim, he absolutely has that problem. Okay. Um, so I was curious about that because I was like, it's to make not much sense if Lorgar was being taken over by a demon mm -hmm. if when he's a demon primer because that's kind of not his shtick, but not yet. Yeah. All right. What is this? Um <clears throat> This is no demon. Lorgar raised his rod, betting to the blood-stained whirlwind, tearing through the last of the Dark Apostles' warriors. Oh, shit. Jeez. Come to me, brother. With the last flurry of activity that turned another legionary into shards of ceramide and ribbons of flesh, the apparition coalesced into a recognizable figure. It was equal height to the demon Primarch, clad in... Oh, so this has been used demon Primarch. Clad in black battle plate with long talon gauntlets, a pair of wings stretched from its ornate backpack fashioned as intricate metallic raven feathers. The face was as pale as snow, gaunt with eyes as dark as coal framed by shoulder-length black hair. What has happened to you, brother? I have ascended, said Lorgar. He indicated Korax with a twitch of his rod. I might ask the same of you. <laughs> I am what I have always been, said Korax. I am vengeance incarnate. I am justice, del he's Batman, yeah, justice <laughs> delivered. This place beyond the veil has revealed what we all are. Underneath the veneer of humanity our father crafted for us, we are of the warp. Have you come to make oath to the powers that are your true creator? No, I swore to destroy all chaos tape from the galaxy. You will be the first fallen brother to die beneath my blades. I am not the creature you fought at Isvan, said Lorgar, raising his mace, nor am I. That's pretty good. That's not bad. That's not that's bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good interaction. I like that. Giant demon burb rolls up and he's like, I'm here to kill chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Plays Limp Biscuit, walks off. He actually says that. Though. He's like, I'm here to kill chaos. Somebody. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. I swore to destroy all chaos. Yeah. Yep. So there's one final excerpt I want to read, Lorgar based thing. Okay. Um, it's where he talks with Fulgrim. Now, I'm sure Shaw might know more about this than I do, and I'm sure the fans can tell me a little bit about this later, but there seems to be something involving a theater. Because Lorgar is taken by Demon Snake Fulgrim to this fancy-pantsy theater, and the theater is just filled row-to-row -row in seats of horrified, like, dead people caught oh. in, in in skeletons and bones and rotting fl and, and like flesh all with like visages and and faces of, of sheer violence and terror oh boy that that's a, that's a chaos theater all right uh, I, I don't know much about Why? this theater i don't know what happened in this theater i don't know about this theater but it seems like it was a pretty goddamn important theater that's where that's where chaos entities go to have a good time. They want to see a show and uh, you know relax a little bit. Yeah, that's some good. that's some Harlequin Ooh. shit. Yeah, that is indeed some Harlequin shit. Ugh. So he's taken uh, by Demon Fulgrim because good old uh, Lorgar wants to see, uh, see his brother. And oh. uh, he said he always enjoyed flattery. Fulgrim smiled. Do you so quickly forget how he sneered at you, Lorgar? Does his disregard slip from your memory so fast? No, the word bear shook his head as if reinforcing the denial. But he had every right to think less of me, for I was never whole, not until now. The thing wearing Fulgrim's skin peeled back its lips in a smile the true Primarch would have never made. <laughs> you asked to see your brother, chosen one. Here he is. This is a painting. Do not mock me, demon. Not after we have at least reached an accord. So you asked to see your brother you had lost. The smile didn't leave Fulgrim's face. I have upheld my end of our argument. It says, the painting. Look deeper. Look longer. It says, he lets eyes slip across the image, seeking no details, merely drifting until it rested where they may. He met the image's soulfully rendered eyes, and at last, Lorgar breathed with the faintest of smiles. Hail, brother, he finally said. 
as uh, Fulgrim is seems to be trapped inside this painting. Damn. And well, the de and the demon is just <clears throat> wearing his skin. That's that's oh boy, that's 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 no good. That's no good for Fulgrim. That's Does, that sucks. Do you see the demon at his side asked for a moment for those three words? It wasn't Fulgrim's voice at all. I see more than you realize. The word bearer turned his face to his brother's captor. If you think to relish all of eternity while playing puppeteer to my brother's bones, you will find yourself fatally disappointed one night. The demon says, you speak the lies of a desperate and foolish soul. Lorgar laughed with a rare and sincere grin, perhaps the only expression that ever broke his resemblance to his father. Your secret is safe with me, demon. Enjoy your stewardship while it lasts. Damn. So he's that's like, a, he, he literally a... sees Fulgrim in the painting and he's like, good job, buddy. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's, 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 uh, Shai said, spoiler alert, uh, Lorgar was right. Fulgrim did get, oh, so Fulgrim does get his body back at some point. Yeah, demon couldn't keep control of a demon of a fucking Primarch forever. Yeah, uh, and I assume he still stays pretty chaos tainted and still worships uh, Slanoosh. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Fulgrim has much of an option in this situation. Damn, that sucks. Would well, but like, was Fulgrim like fully down with the that Slanussi? I don't know. We haven't done a Fulgrim episode yet. Fair play. I guess we. Yeah, it's true. We haven't. Also, to, to, that, to piggyback on the spoiler, Lorgar was right meme, uh, you know what was Lorgar's first ever major book? No, I don't, actually. It was something known as the... Scroll, 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 because I forgot to put down in my notes. Scroll, 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 <laughs> scroll, 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 God walks among us. The first two lines of the Listictio Divinatus. Did you do all of that just to make an Among Us joke, by the way? Holy shit, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> this is how much you've tainted me with all the Among Us shit and all the crewman stuff. I was like, oh yeah, all I, like at first you were reading it and then I heard Among Us. And I was like, oh no, he's going to make a crewman joke. I, I, Emer I didn't, Emergency meeting. Lord, I did Lord call an emer think is Lorgar venting? I didn't even think of this one. <laughs> you God subconsciously damn. do it now. Apparently. You um, don't even know you're doing it. God, God damn. Um, anyway, God, anyway uh, yeah, that was the religious book of during the Great Crusade that, that the emperor is a god. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hated and destroyed by a lot of people, but then it eventually, after the Horus Heresy, about 2,000 years after, it was then taken, and it is now used as the fundamentals for the Imperial Creed. Wow. It is, it is now the, the, the main... I don't think it's exactly the main book, because they would never say that this one is the book. Oh, sure. But, yeah. you know, this is the main founding of the religious zealotry that yeah. we've... Uh, or zeal, ze zealous? Zealotous? But regardless, yeah, Lorgar win like Lorgar wins. Yeah. At the end of the day, the entire Imperium believe him to be a god. The Emperor to be a god, which at this point he doesn't really care. That isn't really him winning anymore because he doesn't give a shit. He cares about the demons instead. Yeah, because after everything that's happened, which is kind of ironic that like it turns out that he was right, but in the state that he's in, he's in right now, they don't really fucking care. It doesn't mean anything to him. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. He, it's interesting. Yeah, Lor Lorgar is an interesting character. Yeah. Lorgar is an interesting character. Shai said, hey, Lorgar founded two religions and they're both super popular. He's doing something right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. I guess they are both popular, but... Lorgar is a fucker. Yeah, he, he, he fucked around and found out. He really did. Yeah. Well, I've got about... That's about it for me. We've uh we've had our discussion in terms of our Lorgar. Lorgar. I don't know if I like Lorgar or not. Definitely an interesting story surrounding Lorgar, and he's definitely an interesting character. I don't know if I like him, but I like stories about him. They're interesting. They're 
they're they're they're pretty messy and yeah i i i I think he's an interesting character to read about but i wouldn't say i'm like oh yeah i'm a big fan of lorgar he's my favorite character ever oh what a good boy yeah uh yeah i think i think that he is um i think he's a shitter i i I, a little bit i think he is a shitter and he has done shittery things uh but i get why he is the way he is for the same reason why I understand why Angron is the way Angron is. Yeah, his, Neither, his n- upbringing had a lot to do with why he's such a shitter. Yeah, yeah. Ignoring the the decades of abuse um, uh, by two dads. <laughs> That's true. Oh, no, he did get totally abused by two separate dads. I hate it. Like, like it doesn't excuse his, his faults, but at least there's a reason for it. At, yeah. at least with most of the traitor Primarchs, they had a reason to be the shitters they were, even if they could have put aside their crap. Like, Angron maybe didn't need to kill all of his own men out of an angry rage like a tantrum, but, yeah, you know, <laughs> Angron was still not the greatest guy. They, yeah. you, you, know, you know what the Butcher's Nails actually is? It's just a constant uh, loop of Versace Bedouin being played over and over again in his uh, oh in his man. mind. That's, yeah. I've got silver in my fingers and boots on my feet. My feet. My feet. I'm, oh, I'm about man. to have an aneurysm is what I'm about to have. <laughs> don't don't lie. You've been listening to that on repeat ad nauseum for the for like the last week, haven't you? Do you know how like that that one minute I will never get that one minute back. No, none of us will. And none of us will get this hour and 15 minutes back either. Shy, pay, take out a gun, shoot me and DK in the head and then the no, episode. Whoa, 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 no. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey. Uh-uh.